We're going to start with um, summer internships and kind of mostly internships in general. Honestly, it's not just summer internships. The basic difference between summer internships and an internship while you're in school is a lot of times your summer internships can be a little bit longer, a little bit more in depth, that sort of thing. But otherwise, it's usually kind of the same deal. So um, an internship is an experience in the workplace that can be paid or not paid, usually lasting between a month to three months long. Like I said, um, if you're doing one during the school year, a lot of times it lasts for the term or the semester that you get the internship. And then a summer internship can be the entire summer, obviously. Um, gives you a chance to explore the industry and the different roles within the company. It's uh, usually, as an intern, it's more of a support role. Um, but it's also good to clarify what the internship will look like so that you're, you make sure as a student that you're getting the type of internship that you're actually looking for. Um, you know, most employers are, do internships um, on the basis of they're hoping to look, find new employees or new people to fill their positions. So this is a way for them to kind of test the waters with some students and um, support and promote their business as well. Why do students do internships? Um, well, one of the main reasons is to develop their knowledge and skills in the particular field or industry. Um, it also gives them the chance, like we talked about in the last slides, to explore different roles to see which ones they may want to pursue in that industry. It also gives valuable experience, such as, you know, kind of that resume builder that can set you apart during the job interview process. Because a lot of times students especially are they don't have any experience when they go out into the work world, but an, an internship can actually give them a little bit of that experience that they're lacking. Um, it may be a requirement to graduate, um, which is off, often the case with certain um, degrees. They have to have an internship to complete it. So that's really good reason to do one. And then um, it also can help you determine if you enjoy the job or the certain industry or the workplace that you might be looking at. And then it's also a great opportunity to gain um, a network of contacts. So those were the main reasons I could come up with. Um, if anyone has anything they wanna add, please be sure and do that. Because this is kind of a good time for an open conversation about it. Um, and then um, where and how do I find internships? I always say ask. I mean, if you have some place that you'd really like to do an internship, it never hurts to ask because sometimes one can be created. Um, of course, you can Google sites, Google for sites that focus on internships. There's a lot of them. I mean, I Googled it and popped up in all over Portland and Central Oregon. And yeah, there's just all types of sites that actually focus on matching interns with a job or a job opportunity or an internship opportunity within the workplace. Um, your advisor or your department at your college or university is a great place to look um, and ask for internships. And then of course, if it's a requirement for your degree or for you to graduate, of course, that's gonna be, they're gonna have lists of places and have a lot of times things are gonna be set up for you ahead of time opportunities. And then some of the other um, good advice was that if you're interested, you should start your research about six months in advance. And paid internships are gonna be much, much more, much, much more competitive than an unpaid. And it seems to be, everything I've read is that the tide is turning more towards paid internships because it feels kind of like um, exploiting the student if they're not getting paid. So that's something that for your student to keep in mind. And then I'm gonna show you an example. A lot of um, the universities, colleges, community colleges have dedicated web pages around internships. So this is just one I pulled off of COCC to show you as an example really quick. So anyway, this is just one example of a, a page, uh, like I said, at Central Oregon Community College that just lists a bunch that they have right now, opportunities. And probably this list in my, my guess is, given the situation with COVID and everything is way less than normal, so. But different um, universities and colleges, like I said before, have different looks and different ways of going about it. Um, like uh, Oregon State has a lot of uh, internships that are on campus and they have them listed just in the, like through the job search, HR department. And so you can Google internships through their HR department and their job site 
and find internships. And we're fortunate enough to have George Oliveira with us today. And he is going to, he just told me exciting, he just got another internship and I don't need, he can tell you how many, he, he'll tell you about his experience at Oregon State, his year, his degree, and um, give a couple of examples of internships that he's had because I knew that he would be a great example for you to hear from a student about internships. So take it away. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> so yeah, I go to Oregon State as well, um, and I'm majoring in construction, engineering, and management. Um, luckily, when I came out of high school, I came um, into an encounter with one of these old referees that used to ref me in high school, and he worked at an engineering firm, and um, you know, he asked me what my plans were for the future. And he told me that he could get me an internship with his company up in Redmond. Um, and the firm was a surveying and engineering company. And so I went up there and I interviewed with them. Um, They're all really nice and open to have an intern that was coming out of high school. Um, so they put me in the surveying department, which I mean, not that it lacked less knowledge, but it was more suited for me at the time. Um, because I hadn't even gone to school to, you know, take any engineering classes at all. Um, but yeah, I was there with them and I did everything a surveyor would do. And I got to learn, you know, a lot about what an engineer does and what a surveyor does. Um, and so that was a really cool experience. I got to travel all over Oregon. Um, we got a lot of the ODOT jobs all around Oregon. So if you see any um, highway jobs or anything like that, the company I worked for, a lot of the times um, their survey company would... Um, take over those projects. Um, so that was really fun and got to get paid some prevailing wage. So for those of you who don't know, that's just a lot of money <laughs> per hour. <laughs> so that was a plus. Um, and yeah, I get a lot of experience going into that. And now that I'm two years into school, I'm actually taking a survey class. Um, and looking back on the internship, it really helped me to succeed in that class. And then I stay with them throughout the next year in contact with them while I was at OSU. And then the following summer after my first year at OSU, um, the boss, the owner put me into the engineering department and I really got to take advantage of all the programs they have. Like there's one called AutoCAD, that's a big drawing software. Um, got some really good experience there. And the thing is for mine, it was a small firm. So he really kind of let me go on projects. And a lot of the times where companies have like a set inter internship program for, you know, college students. And they kind of, they kind of only let them do a certain amount of things, but the company I was at, they really let me go. So as far as like where you intern, it all depends uh, like who it is. Like if it's a smaller firm, they might let you do more things. They might let you be more free. If it's a bigger firm, they could, you know, you're going to be doing just one thing and you might not get as much experience. Um, but you'll still gain a lot of experience just being there and, you know, picking up on certain things. Um, and then those were two summers. And then this summer I got an internship with this company up in Salem. Um, and they do construction all around Oregon as well. And they have a, um, a site in Bend and they placed me there. So I'm going to be there all summer and doing some like supervision stuff, working in the office, doing some drops, um, and so I hope that's going to be a good experience as well. But I mean, if I could give any advice, it'd be, you know, have internships, but also be willing to move to a different internship because if you're just stuck in one place, um, you're only, you know, fixed to that, that type of knowledge. Um, that's what my, the first internship I was at, that's what my boss told me. He said, you know, I want you to go to other companies because you start learning more, you pick up other things from different people. And, I mean, at the end of the day, when you go to apply um, for, a, I guess, a real job, a full-time job, you have all these things that you can say, I did this and I did this. I have experience doing this. And it really puts you up the list for, you know, picking up a job. With so what do you think the most valuable thing you've gained from these experiences so far has been? I mean, have you learned like what you like and what you don't like or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as like me working for a smaller firm, it put a lot more pressure on me just because I was able to do a lot more things and that, you know, took responsibility. So I learned a lot from that also, um, you know, time management, 
you know, working overtime, doing all those things. The most valuable thing that I learned was just like learning to, I guess, love what you're doing. Cause if you hate what you're doing, then like, you know, when you go get your real job, you're going to be like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. And you just got a four year degree for no reason. And that yeah. happens to a lot of people. So, I mean, internships is really good to you open your eyes and um, see what you actually want to do. Yeah. So I was in MECOP and um, I decided to opt out of that. Um, but I mean, MECOP is a great, great um, program. It just didn't suit me personally, but I mean, it suits a lot of people. Uh, MECOP is another uh, engineering program through OSU, OIT, University of Portland. Um, and they get internships for students. But for them, they, um, the way their process goes is, you know, you get interviews, you get into the program, and then two years in, you then go to like, I guess it's kind of like a lottery pick thing, kind of like the NBA does in sports, um, where companies interview you and they say, okay, this is my top, my top intern that I want. And the companies discuss and say, and they place you there. Um, and for me personally, I wanted to pick, you know, where I wanted to go. So um, going back to like where you can get internships, OSU, and I'm sure other schools do it too. They have um, career fairs and oh, yeah, you're in the job. College of Business, College of Business, College of Engineering, College of, you know, Ag Science, all these different colleges. Um, they bring in companies where you can go and talk to them um, one day and then um, the next day they offer interviews or that week they offer interviews and I mean you can get an internship in a matter of you know two days so um, that's another thing you can take advantage of yeah and like my so the first internship that I got um, that I worked two summers for uh, when I told them I wasn't going to work there anymore and I was going to move on to a different company um, which he, you know, he was the one that told me to do that. Yeah. He said, you know, if you ever need something or, you know, you need a job, like we'll always be here. So like, it also gives you uh, another, you know, relationship that you have with, you know, your career Yes. to fall back on. So it's the contacts, right? Those yeah. contact building. And that's really important and a huge piece of the internship. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very so like, if you have your internship, make sure, you know, have your A game on all the time because I know everyone's always watching. <laughs> right. It is a little nerve wracking, huh? Yeah. You don't know when that's going to pay off. It's like, oh, you did a really good job here. And it's like, oh, maybe someone knows someone. And he said, oh, he's a really good, you know, worker. And so he, someone hires you. So you just never yeah. know. Cool. 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 And the good thing is, is if you would have done your internship, like even after your senior year of high school and not enjoyed it, you would have known that that was a not the right field for you and you could have switched at that point so it's cool yeah. to have an internship at such an early point in your um education yeah and like you I can mean, get an internship pretty much you know at any age after high school yeah. i guess or even in high school I bet. even in high school yeah, yeah we're doing more and more yeah it's just a matter of you actually going out and trying to look for it right like i said ask right mm -hmm. it's the same thing i tell students with scholarships just ask, you never know which company might have a little bit of money set aside and would be willing to give you a scholarship if you ask. Well, thank you so, so much for being yeah. here tonight. And it was really cool to hear about all of your fun experiences. And of course, I'll be checking in and wanting to hear more. So, all right. So moving on to summer jobs. The first question for a lot of high school students uh, who are wanting to work over the summer is, where do I even find a job? And I think for most high school students, at this stage in their life, they're wanting to find something just temporary. Obviously, if they're looking at college, they might not be able to keep that job once they move in the fall. Um, so the typical go-to ones tend to be fast food and retail and some of the ag jobs in the summers, um, like either picking uh, fruits or working in a combining or other you know, seasonal jobs but there's a lot, a lot of variety of jobs out there that um, a lot of students sometimes don't think about. And so I just wanted to f demonstrate a couple sites that students can use um, when they're looking for jobs. Um, so we're gonna start with WorkSource Oregon. Um, I, I believe every county has at least one WorkSource office. Um, and so we're gonna take a look at the website. 
just as an example of what that would look like if you were looking at WorkSource for employment. Um, so here you see WorkSource Oregon, and we wanna go over to where it says job seekers and find a job. Where it says find the job, uh, you'll see that it even has internships or apprenticeships, oh, yeah. sorry. Um, but yeah, when you click on browse Oregon jobs, it should let you type in summer. There you go. Um, if you type in summer and then look for your region. So if you look, I don't know, if you wanna put um, Redmond or Bend or any city you wanna put in there. A lot of times that'll give you seasonal jobs. So there you see a whole list. You could be a sheep herder, Jose. Yeah, um, yeah, so there's gonna, <laughs> There's gonna, it's gonna populate with a lot of, a lot of positions that have the word summer in there, and that's just a good place to start because you know that it's most likely gonna be a seasonal job, and that when you go into interview and let them know that, hey, I'm only interested in working for the summer months. I'm gonna be starting college pretty soon, and I might be moving. Um, it's not gonna be a deal breaker, um, so you don't want to walk into something where they're expecting to get someone who's gonna be there year round and then you can't do that. So um, that's why I would suggest starting there. Um, I wanna go back now to the other sites just to demonstrate okay. what they look like, but they're all yeah. pretty yeah. similar. You'll notice that WorkSource and Indeed and LinkedIn all have very similar functions. Uh, but the thing is you might find some jobs on WorkSource that are not available on Indeed and vice versa. Sorry. I don't know how to do it another way. Am I doing this wrong? No, you're doing it fine. If you just okay. want to, instead of going back to the PowerPoint next on the link, next link, just click on it and we'll still see your browser. Yeah, okay. Oh, right. There you go. That makes sense. Is this okay. the one? Indeed. Yes, okay. Yeah, so Indeed was already preset with summer in there. So if you see, it says what, and it says summer, and then where, Oregon. Oh, yeah. This is statewide, though. So it's going to populate with jobs all over the state. So you're going to want to pay attention to like that one says Portland. At Post, some summer jobs actually even provide housing. So a lot of the camp ones, you actually go and stay there over the summer and you get to, you know, live in the cabins, um, that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's a, that's a good one to check out. And that's indeed.com. Um, another one is monster.com. It's a very popular site used by people looking for jobs. Um, so I'm gonna ask um, Jennifer not to end the screen share, but just go back into the the PowerPoint and click on the- Click on that, yeah. On the that makes sense. Screen. Okay, thanks for the little tip. No worries. There we go. Yeah. There we go, we can still see your screen. <laughs> Yep, and so um, Monster, very similarly to WorkSource Oregon and Indeed, it's it's populated by a search term and then by a region. So this one is also preset to Oregon, so it's a statewide one, and the keyword it's looking for is summer. If you're looking specifically for something in healthcare or education or camps or you can filter. Retail. You can filter. Yeah, you can filter it. You can filter it by region. Um, so definitely play around with that and kind of just scope it out um, and see what kind of jobs are of interest to you. Okay. Um, I think there is one more, but it's not really necessary. It's the same kind of thing. The other one was LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah we'll just look real quick. Okay. There we go. Yep, and the same thing with this one. I had it preloaded with summer in there, also with Oregon, and um, the even an is, Oregon State job. Look. <laughs> yeah, although you have to be careful because you're going to want to look at the requirements for the jobs and the qualifications. Yeah. So not all of the jobs are going to be av available to high school graduates. Some of those jobs are going to be looking for more experience or some sort of college degree or license or certificate. So just keep an eye on those, but um, that's definitely a good place to get you started looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna definitely provide you a lot more variety beyond the typical you know, fast food restaurant or retail um, job for the summer. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. I wanted to say one thing because it popped up here on this one right here, Jose, we were gonna talk about AmeriCorps. Oh yeah, go ahead. For VISTAs, and that's a great opportunity for college students. I think you have to be 18 to be AmeriCorps, but um, great opportunity. And 
it's something that employers really like to see because it's sort of on a volunteer, it's sort of volunteer, but you also get paid. So they call you, actually call you an AmeriCorps volunteer because you live at there. What they like you to do is um, technically live at poverty level. So, cause you're helping underrepresented groups often in an AmeriCorps position so that you feel they say that, you know, you, you live like they live, but um, anyway, it's just kind of a, but then they also give you a, a scholarship, right? To go to school after your service, but there's some really great AmeriCorps opportunities. So I do highly recommend looking at those for students as well. Um, okay, so a lot of times students don't have experience uh, building a resume. And so because of that, um, we wanted to extend ourselves as a resource. If a student is applying to a job that requires a resume, um, they can definitely reach out to us. There's a lot of resources online that give demonstrations and examples of resumes that they could look into. Um, but it is important that a student um, know how to do that. And sometimes their own high schools provide it through their college and career center. Um, but not every high school has that resource available to their students. So we also wanted to make sure that students knew they could reach out to us and our information is gonna be available in the last slide. Um, the other thing is writing a cover letter. So the resume basically is like a list of experiences that you have that would make you qualified for that job. So you wanna, if, if you're being asked to submit a resume, you're gonna to wanna to put your name, your contact information, and then list the qualifications that you have for the job and any prior experience that you have for the job. Uh, that's related to it, that could help you get the job. The cover letter is, a, it's not gonna be a list, it's gonna be more of an actual letter telling the people why you're interested for the job, why you think you're qualified for the job, um, any details that you wanna share with them, and just thanking them for their time in reviewing your application. And then finally, the interview, um, that can be one of the more, the more uh, nerve-wracking pieces for students who don't have experience uh, going into interviews because they don't know what to expect. And just like for college scholarships that require interviews, job interviews are very, very important. And the way you dress, um, the way you prepare for them, and um, just being able to anticipate questions you might receive uh, could really put you ahead of the competition. Um, but it, a lot of times it also just depends on what job you're applying to. So that you want to know what the people are looking for in a candidate. Um, so for this piece, we just wanted to say, if you are wanting some counseling or guidance on any of these three pieces, you could reach out to us um, and we can help coach you. Um, but it, I also just wanted to say there's a ton of resources online, even just on YouTube that can help demonstrate what, um, if you're gonna be working in an office setting, what proper attire would be for a male or female um, in, in an office setting. So I'm personally, I don't know a lot for like women attire, but for men, it's, it's very simple. A lot of times it's just dress pants, dress shoes, and a button up shirt, you know? Like it's very simple and straightforward for men. For women, I think it's a little trickier on what's considered appropriate in the office. So maybe Jennifer could, could help with that piece. Um, but yeah, it's really important that you know before going into that interview how to look the role for what you're looking for and how to present yourself in the best way possible. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I had there. Um, I will share with you today, I got a phone call about a scholarship at Western Oregon University that is basically a full ride to students who applied to that scholarship. And usually they only give one or two of those scholarships. Um, and I got a call from the program director because there was two of my students that were interviewed. And she said, you know, it's such a shame because I, I personally didn't know they, they actually got to the interview part. So I didn't, I didn't have any a chance to, to coach them or help them. Um, but she said, coming into this part of the process, they were two of our top candidates. And she said one of them in particular was the student to beat. She was almost a shoe in But when it came to the interview, she logged on. It was a Zoom call. She logged on late, like very, very late, to the point to where they had to call and they called her dad and her dad got her and she connected. Um, I think 
she was out of work late or something like that. Um, she couldn't get her camera on. Um, she, her responses seemed a little too like short, like she wasn't really giving it much effort. And so she went from being their top candidate to losing out on a full ride scholarship because of that one interview. Um, and it's just such a shame. And she was just sharing with me, you know, if I had known these were your students, I might've given you a heads up so that you could let them know what to expect and how to prepare because these students don't know how to interview. And she said it, it was so apparent and it was just a, such a shame because on paper, they, they look to be some of the top students that we might've chosen if their interview had been just a little bit better. Um, and so, you know, that makes me a little sad because sometimes this one part of the interview could keep you from getting that job or getting that scholarship. So George, who was just on here, I know he won't mind me saying this, but he um, got interviewed for MECOP, he got interviewed for Ford Family and a couple other big time scholarships that he landed. And before each and every interview, he had a practice session, a mock interview. Even though he had nailed a couple, it didn't matter. He kept practicing every single time and with different people. And it's just a skill that, especially if you're uncomfortable or you're not used to doing an interview, it's definitely something that all of our students need to be doing mock interviews and with different people, especially people that they're not comfortable with so that they're learning to perform in that type of a situation or to be their best or to show who they really are. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough in that the interview process is something that definitely the students need to practice with. That's right. Okay, and that's pretty much all I had for you today. Um, oh, I did want to share this one last resource because it does provide some information on those things that I just talked about, like the cover letter, the resume, and interviews. Um, so Jennifer, if you want to stop sharing this piece and share that site, um, I just want to show the types of resources. That website is actually pretty amazing. It has a lot of different things um, around career exploration, job applications, internships, apprenticeships, all of that. And it's, it's called Learn How to Be. Um, you can see right there that has information about scholarships. So Saida, if you want to write that down, the website's called learn how to be, or sorry, learn how to become.org. Um, it has a lot of information about scholarships, um, but if you want to click on career resources, oops, sorry, up, yeah, there's a, yeah, right there. And you scroll down, uh, there you go, right there. So it has a couple different links um, to like, examples on how to create your resume. It has um, search engines for jobs and apprenticeships. Just a ton of really great resources uh, for students and anyone in general, really. Um, so I just wanted to recommend that one as one to check out. There's a lot of different sites online though, but this was one that I found that I really liked. Um, and it's called learnhowtobecome.org. Okay.